So September 1st, time is passing quickly. All right, so we really are still in section 1-3. All right, and technically this is day three. Okay, because two days and one on Monday. <clears throat> all right, now what's gonna happen, all right, is that remember the other day when we were playing with the graphing calculator and we messed with things and we, we did a direct substitution, we plugged things in and we got that zero over zero, all right? You can't do zero over zero. Zero over zero is considered to be an indeterminate form. All right, so let's say you do a direct substitution in your limit, okay? Because you've been seeing me do that little notation. I've been writing DS every time I do my direct substitution. And then let's say you do it and you get zero over zero, all right? This is going to be our first indeterminate form. Okay, we're gonna get lots of different types of indeterminate forms, all right? But for right now, since we're taking an algebraic approach to our limits, this one is the first one we're going to encounter, all right? So when you do your direct substitution, you get zero over zero, all right, at that point, you don't know what the answer is yet. And all that is telling you to do is, hey, you got to do something else in order to get the answer. Okay, that's what it translates into. All right, so remember how I made you multiply through by the least common denominator like over and over and over last year in pre-calc, and then I made you rationalize numerators? This is where that comes into play. All right, so in other words... Let's take a look at maybe say the limit as x approaches zero of the square root of x plus one minus one all over x. <clears throat> all right, now doesn't that look like the problems that we did in pre-calc where I, without the limit, where I asked you to rationalize the numerator? That was an algebra skill that you needed. Okay, now so. I do want you to be able to look at these limit problems and realize, ooh, hey, that really looks familiar to how I rationalize a numerator. So that's probably the approach I'm going to have to go, but I have to check to make sure. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to do the direct substitution just to make sure. So you take that zero and you plug it in, right? And when I plug it in, my limit notation goes away. So I'm going to get a zero plus one minus one all over a zero. Square root of one <clears throat> is one. One minus one on top is zero. And then I get the zero on the bottom. So yeah, I do definitely get my indeterminate form. All right, which just means direct substitution doesn't work. I have to come up with some other method in order to get the answer. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to rationalize my numerator. I am going to keep my limit notation in front of every line because that part is calculus. For now, everything I do is just gonna be algebra. So I'm gonna do the limit as X approaches zero. I'm gonna rewrite the problem here. Square root of X plus one minus one all over X. All right, now I'm going to do the rationalize the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate X plus one plus one all over square root of x plus one plus one. All right, well, remember that? That's rationalizing the numerator. Let's write that down in shortcut form here. Rationalize the numerator. All right, now, technically, I mean, it'll clutter it up, but I'm taking the limit of this entire thing. I have not done any calculus yet. I am just working on my algebra. <coughs> I think I want to try to go across here. All right, you can go down, you can go across. I'm going to go ahead and go across, try to save some paper here. Limit as X approaches zero. All right, now, can I multiply really quickly across the top? Can I multiply my first terms and get X plus one? And I know I chose the conjugate so it would form the difference of two squares. So then I can do minus. And then can I square one times one? And then I get one. Don't let me screw my math up. All right. And then on the bottom, last year I tried to get you to not get in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. Don't distribute. We just want the X there. We want the square root of X plus one and then plus one. 
don't get in a hurry. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna come down here because I'm running out of room. So again, I keep my limit notation because all I'm doing is a bunch of algebra in here. Okay, so let's see, the one minus one, numerator simplifies. All right, now can I simplify a little bit more in the same step? Do I have an X in the top and an X in the bottom that I can cross out? So the X is crossed out and it leaves me with a one in the top. So then I'm gonna have a one over square root of X plus one plus one. Can I do any more algebra? Okay, there's the algebra on steroids part. You got to be able to rationalize that numerator. Now, am I ready for a direct substitution? Yep, ready for my direct substitution. So the limit notation goes away and I do one over the square root of zero plus one plus one. Square root of one is one. One plus one on the bottom is two. So my limit is one half. <clears throat> Now, the other thing that I made you do over and over and over last year was factor, right? And factor all different types of polynomial equations. All right, so <clears throat> we might have to do some factoring. All right, let's, we'll do a couple of these. Let's do the limit as X approaches two and let's do an X minus two. And then on the bottom, let's do an X squared minus an X minus a two. And again, it may be written like that or you might see the square bars around it. All right, that's just saying you're taking the limit of that entire expression, okay? First step, always, you gotta do a direct substitution. That's the first thing you do every time just to see if you get an answer right away. So I'm gonna plug two in. I'm gonna get a two minus two on the top, two squared minus two minus two. All right, so two minus two on top is zero, four minus two, <coughs> excuse me, minus two more gets me that zero over zero. So yes, it is an indeterminate form. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that means I look at this type of expression, all right? It's not a rationalizing the numerator. It's not multiplying through by the least common denominator, but do I have something that can be factored? The trinomial on the bottom can be factored. So I keep my limit notation out in front, I keep the X minus two on the top. And then I just do, that one's gonna be an easy little guess and check there. All right, so an X and an X, two and one. And opposite signs. And since it's a negative one in the middle, two's gotta be negative, one's gotta be positive. All right, can we factor that quickly? All right, when leading coefficient of one, we should. All right, now let's do some more algebra on the inside. I got an X minus two on the bottom. I got an X minus two on the top, which means if I go across here, I'll save a little bit more paper. Um, the limit as X approaches two, now I've got one over an X plus one. Clean it up. You should always clean it up. All right, and then now I'm ready for my direct substitution. So I take the limit notation away, one over two plus one, Gets me a one third unless I made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so we get so far. All right, now let's try one of the factoring ones that you might, because that was an easy factoring. So let's do another factoring. Maybe that um, we might stretch it a little bit here. How about the limit as X approaches negative three of an X to the third plus a 27 all over an X plus three. And again, maybe you'll see those square brackets around it. Maybe you won't. Okay, so step one, always try a direct substitution because if you can plug it in and get an actual answer, then that's definitely the way you want to go. So I'm going to plug in a negative three, it looks like. So a negative three to the third plus 27, a negative three plus a three. All right, some of you are gonna be able to do that more quickly in your head. <clears throat> Negative 27 plus 27 over zero, zero over zero. Okay, so indeterminate form. All right, on the IU exam, they really do like to see that you justify, oh, hey, it's an indeterminate form. That's why you chose to do another method. All right, because sometimes it may look like it can be factored, 
But when you plug in, you get a number. If I would get one half, I'd be done after that first step, okay? So it didn't work. Now, do we remember how to factor that top? What was the acronym I gave you for factoring that top? So, yep, because that's uh, the uh, sum of two perfect cubes, okay? So we call that SOAP. All right, so you're going to factor the top based on your SOAP acronym. So the limit as X approaches negative three. Okay, so we took the cube root of the first one, which was X. Cube root of 27, which is three. And same sign, first acronym in SOAP, same sign. Then we squared our first term, so x squared. We did the opposite sign. We multiplied the a and the b, which is 3x. Always positive, so the last two parts of the acronym, always positive, square the last one. Do you remember doing that? Can you do it that fast? Okay, again, that's why I kind of hit you with factoring tons and tons and tons last year so that it would make this easier. All right, and then hopefully we get lucky and an X plus three and an X plus three crosses out. You probably, that one is not as cluttered as some of the other ones. I usually do go ahead and rewrite just to clean it up the limit as X approaches negative three. And then the only thing I have left is the X squared <laughs> minus the three X plus the nine. All right, that just kind of cleans it up really nice do a direct substitution, which I haven't been putting the equal signs there. Okay, so I'm doing, it is equal, but direct substitution. So negative three squared minus three times a negative three plus nine. Hmm, nine plus nine plus nine, 27. 